Hello and welcome to Driver's Therapy. Today we're gonna to be talking about the ACA8 engine performance test. Now before you kick it off, I just wanna show you guys, I got this cool shirt and I put the AC patch on there. Oh yeah, well guys, I just took the test yesterday and I passed. I barely passed, like I passed only by three questions. And the funny thing is I was like stuck on a few of them and I kept on switching the answers so I got pretty lucky on those because I was confused on those. Well guys, this test was a pain in the butt. We're gonna talk about that and uh, we're gonna go further. I'm gonna give you guys some advice where I think you guys should really study on and go from there. All right, so let's kick it off. The first thing I wanna address is this study guide. Now, if you guys have been watching the previous videos where I give advice and talk about different AC tests, I've been using the Delmar study guides and to be honest with you, I've had a lot of success with them. I like them, uh, but this one was kind of rough. This one had a lot of grammatical errors. It also had errors in the answers and just the way that they explain things, just, it, all, it was hard to understand. I feel like I'm not sure whoever was editing this, if English was their first language, but I found some issues. Luckily, I did pass the test, so I, I, I did get some value from this. And luckily, I have also used these before, and this wasn't my first impression, but this one was a little rough. This was on a rough side. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a talk about the A8 test. Now, originally, when I signed up for the engine performance, like original, originally, and I read the topic, I was excited because I thought engine performance, you know, being a car guy and, you know, being a tuner and, you know, uh, tinkering with my cars, I was just thinking like, ooh, this is going to be about turbochargers or superchargers or something cool like that. Nope. This was about emissions, really. I mean, hardcore emissions. And guys, I... You know, if you think about the emissions on your cars, you know, have you had to work on them or, or do anything with them? Most of us haven't. And if you worked at a shop, they're not, you know, usually a uh, check engine light might pop up for something related like the O2 sensor or, or an exhaust issue, but really the intricate emission systems like the EVAP or the EGR, we'll talk about what that is here in a second. You know, you don't get a lot of experience with that. So this was a really, this in my, in my opinion was the hardest test I've taken so far. I barely passed, uh, you know, and, um, and so yeah. So let's Let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so guys, I think this is where you should honestly be studying at. First off, you should understand how the emission systems work, the three separate ones. First one we're gonna talk about is gonna be the EVAP system, and that's just the emissions evaporation system. The best way to describe it is it just keeps the fuel vapors uh, controlled and also filtered out, um, and also, you know, essentially, they don't want that to go in the atmosphere because it's just harmful for the atmosphere, for humans, and for the environment. Um, so the EVAP system is essentially the vapor system. What you want to do is you want to understand how that works. What I did is I watched a lot of cool videos where they were showing, uh, um, there was a video I'm going to try to attach to the description where the guy showed how the system works because he he actually put together the system um, like outside of the car, like using just miscellaneous pieces that he had. And it really helps you understand how the system works. Uh, I'll put that in a link, but you really want to get an idea of how that works. The solenoids, the piping, uh, how, how, why, when, when it vents out, when it does it. The next one's gonna be the EGR. I thought the EGR was pretty cool because uh, in my Toyota Supra, I was going to delete the EGR because there's like a delete EGR kit. And the crazy thing is, I don't even know why they sell that kit because EGR really isn't just for emissions. I mean, it is, but it isn't. But essentially, um, the exhaust gas recirculation also cools the temperatures in the cylinder. Now, I know I should have known this. I know you guys are like, you're going to be a master technician, you should know this. But I'm not afraid to tell you that there's certain things I've just never experienced with. I mean, they never broke. I've never dealt with them in my professional career. They just, you know, they just, they just work. And, and the cars that I've dealt with never had any issues. So the EGR system, learning about that was really cool because I had a personal interest in it because I was just like, well, knowing how the system works, that they essentially the gas is recirculated, it's inert gas, meaning that it's it's missing certain molecules or certain you know stuff in the air, and it essentially cools the chamber in the um, in the cylinder and just makes everything uh, uh, the combustion process less hot and that helps out with the emissions. So just learning about that really helped out. Uh, so it was really important to understand the theory of operation of the system, why it's done, and also now I don't want to get political. I don't want to get like you know show you tell you guys what my opinion is on life. But I did watch a video about LA 
and LA smog was horrible. Like just look at 1930 to 1950, actually 1950 smog. I don't know if the cars were just being introduced then, uh, but it, I think it was also the coal industri industrial era or whatever. But anyways, essentially smog, it was a big issue and a lot of it was being contributed uh, by cars. So a lot of these emission stuff, even though it might hurt performance a little bit, uh, you know, depending on, on the make and the model, it, it, it actually just uh, really learning about it really made me understand have a, a greater appreciation for what it does for the air quality um, So a lot of these systems are really integrated in the car It's really cool because I've always heard about OBD1 and OBD2 I just know that oh, before all this I just know OBD2 was you know You had more access you could read and write and you you know OBD1 was just blinky lights <laughs> literally that's what, But just understanding for you guys when you're studying you're really gonna want to know a lot about OBD2 OBD1 is pretty much you know, it's very simple which is has you know blinky lights certain diagnostics that you you know it was just the technology was being formed there wasn't a lot of emissions regulations a lot of laws obd2 you know how you know emission laws were set in stone by then there was a lot more systems to control as far as emissions related and essentially you know the obd2 um has uh, uh things that monitor it and, and also put it out of mill which is the, the malfunction indicator lamp. And essentially, you really want to understand how the OBD2 system works. Uh, you know, not too crazy, but just enough to know um, what it checks, what systems, what the codes are. I didn't know this either, and that's the, like the P code, and in the zero to one, if it's the SAE or general code, or if it's manufacturer related. And then essentially, you're gonna to want to learn uh, the OBD2 system and kind of understand how the code readouts work and what those letters and numbers mean. Now, another thing I really recommend you guys to look at is understand fuel trims. This thing, this was a little hard for me. I had a kind of a background in it uh, because I dealt with a lot of issues with a certain car where it was hesitating. So I dealt a lot with the fuel injectors. I had them clean, flow tested. I understand, you know, uh, you know, the pulse width. I understand flow rate, you know, I understand. Uh, so the fuel system had a very good understanding. But uh, apparently understanding fuel trims, long-term fuel trims, and short-term fuel trims is very important for you to guys understand what negative ones are and what positive are. Now, if you're doing this test and you have some experience and you already understand this, you are way ahead of uh, the ball curve. So essentially, I think I said that ball curve. Anyways, you're ahead of the game. Um, so pretty much understanding the fuel trims is gonna be really important for you guys to know. Uh, another thing I think is really important is gonna be understanding, uh, essentially going back and knowing your schematics and knowing uh, uh, how to, to understand how to troubleshoot wires in a schematic. Now what I mean by that is if you have a schematic and you're showing certain numbers on certain wires, you really have to understand and, you know why a number would show 12 volts or why a number shows zero volts just understand they do tie in a few other topics from other other you know they're gonna talk a little bit about the charging system uh, you know they're gonna talk a little bit uh, about valve trains and about uh, compression tests and about uh, 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 a leak down test and the uh, what's that give me a second real quick. I'm trying to think about the test uh, the power test uh, the one that you remove power from the spark plug and see if it makes a difference. Um, I forgot about the name of that. But anyways, guys, essentially, uh, cylinder power test. Yeah, there it goes. So essentially, if you've taken other tests, um, I, I was kind of grateful I did because there was a few questions that overlapped and I, was, I found that kind of curious. Now, I, I am keeping the test questions very vague because, of course, there's a, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I'm giving you ideas of the areas of where to study at. So essentially guys, I hope this information will help you. I really think that that is the most important thing. Oh, one more last thing, I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I really think you guys should understand sensors, O2 sensors and Hall effect sensors. Understand how they work. Understand why a Hall effect sensor has kind of like a square type of uh, a wavelength thingy. You know, you just really wanna understand um, how the sensors related to fuel and emissions work and understand if you needed to troubleshoot or if you saw those in an oscilloscope, how how you would know if it's good or bad. Well guys, I hope this information helps. If you have any questions, 
feel free to put them in the comments. And if you need more help, I'm always willing, uh, you could always uh, send me an email in the about section in our channel page and we'll get back to you and I could talk to you in person, through, I mean in the phone. If you're local, I don't mind talking to you in person either. But anyways guys, one thing I do ask is that you punch that subscribe button. For you, all it is is a reminder when I post a video, for me, it's just one of those cool things where I could walk around and be like, hey, what's your subscriber count? And I could you know, tell people it's more than 2,000, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways guys, I really appreciate what you guys uh, taking the time to watch this video and I hope you got some good information from it. You guys stay safe and stay tuned and we'll talk to you later.